Hi, you're watching this video because you've chosen to build your ePortfolio on WordPress.com. If you don't have a lot of computer experience or are more of a beginner computer user, I recommend that you go to ePortResource.Weebly.com. And once you're here, go to the Platform Benefits and Drawbacks document in the Tutorials tab to select another platform. If you're not going to use WordPress on a weekly basis, it may be hard for you to pick back up in a few months. WordPress tends to be a little tricky to work with and even sometimes tricky to troubleshoot. So I recommend choosing another site to build with because it will be easier for most users. This document will show you the pros which are in green and the cons which are in red. Anything blue is neutral. Once you select the one that you want to use, go ahead and just click on the site and it will take you to that site to build on. We have the tutorials back on the tutorials page where you can scroll down and follow the tutorials on the other sites. If you want to continue to work on WordPress, go ahead and follow me to WordPress.com. So, we're going to make sure that this is WordPress.com because there is a difference between WordPress.com and WordPress.org. When you're here, go ahead and click on Create Website. It will take you through a series of steps to help you create your site. The first step asks you about your site. You want to choose Education and Organizations. Part 2 of this first step wants you to specify what kind of category your site falls under, so choose College Education. If you don't see it, go ahead and scroll down. The second step wants to know what sort of layout to use for your home page. I recommend the option that says a welcome page for my site because we're not going to use posts for your ePortfolio. The third step is going to ask you to choose a theme, which is basically the look of your site. However, I'm going to recommend that you scroll to the bottom of the page for now and choose skip for now so we can get everything set up first. Then at the end of the tutorials, I'll show you how to choose your theme. The reason I'm doing this is so we can have a similar screen while you set up your ePortfolio. The fourth step will be asking you for a domain name. This is essentially your website URL. Most people use their personal usernames, parts of their names and numbers, like your MyPage login, or some people like to use parts of a song or quote they like. Most companies use the name of their company. Feel free to use whatever you wish, just don't use your full name if you're concerned about people googling you, although we'll make sure to hide your site from search engines later on in the tutorials. The one that I'm going to choose for myself will be this. Once you've chosen a name, it will give you a few options of what's available. For most of you, please choose the free option, which is usually the first choice on the list. If you have and want to use your own domain, you can choose to do that too, but you'll have to upgrade. If you don't like the options WordPress is giving you, please continue to change the name until you're happy with the available options here. Then click on Select. The next step is to choose a plan. We suggest the free option, but if you'd like to pay for more options and features, you can certainly do that. You can also choose to upgrade at a later time if you choose to. The very last step of setting up your account is to put in your personal email. And we're using a personal email because this will be easier for you to use your account after you graduate if you choose to. Then you want to select a username, which a default will be given to you, but you can certainly change this if you want. And then finally, you want to choose the password. And finally, you just want to click on Create My Account. Alright, now that we have this set up, um, we are going to take a break, and in the next tutorial, I'll show you how to set up your ePortfolio pages and fix your menu. Thanks for watching.